Well, you know, it's either that or we just go completely random. Wow. I, I don't know. Because I've got, I, I don't think I really came up with another concept unless we wanted to do an icon thing. Well, who are you thinking on icons? <sighs> Actually, I didn't give that one a lot of thought. Matthew Broderick? I, I don't think we, Matthew Broderick. Hmm. There's an idea. You know, really, he's only got two really big ones in the in the uh, '80s, though, that I can recall, and that's Ferris and War. War games. games. Hold on, hold on. We're bringing up IMDb. Let's see what we got for him. Is there? There was that movie where he was uh, like in the Air Force and he was uh, training monkeys. Oh, Project X. That's a dark movie. That's hard. That was a hardcore one. Max Dugan returns. Yep. Lady Hawk. Oh, I don't remember Lady Hawk. What? I I remember I remember knowing of the movie, but I don't remember like I can't recall things that went on in it. I don't remember what he played in it. Yeah. I thought that was um... Project X, Biloxi Blues. She's having a baby. He was uncredited for that though. I was going to say, she's having a baby? That's yeah, it, it, well, it's a, he's uncredited Ferris Bueller. So maybe they're watching it or something? I don't know. Oh, by the way, if we ever do a Kevin Bacon icon, we got to get Cheryl in on that. Oh, really? Oh, yes. That's how, that's how uh, Cheryl and I kind of got to know each other. Um, although she was, you know, part of, like, she was, she wasn't married to Chris yet. This is before they got married. Um, but we were at a party at his sister's house. Uh, and uh, I got talking to Cheryl and we were doing six degrees of uh, Kevin Bacon. Okay. And she's really good at it. Like we were really going at it. We, we could really uh, go the distance. So it was uh, a lot of fun. So if you do Kevin Bacon, we got to get Cheryl in on that. She'll be all over it. We will have to remember that. Yes. Um, uh, let me think. Think, think, think. Icon 80s. We don't want to do any of the Outsiders without Rose. Right, because she would be... She needs to be part of that Icon series. Yeah, she needs to be... Yeah, that was kind of... Everybody got all excited about that one. Uh, there's got to be somebody. Think somebody. We got. We could do Matthew Broderick. I like the Matthew Broderick thing. I mean, unless you think somebody else wants to get on that one. No, I, I mean I'm fine with Matthew Broderick, but you made it sound like you didn't have much going on there. I got like the two movies that I remember really watching with him in it were absolutely Ferris Bueller and War Games, which you know we could go on about War Games for a little while. I'm sure we could. All right, well then let's go Matthew Broderick. All right, then. Ooh, Max Dugan Returns. I remember that one. Right. <laughs> You're like, what? No, no, I, no, I remember Max Dugan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I remember, uh, you know what? Forget it. We'll just save it. All right. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Recording in progress. Yeah, we have been recording, so good. Got all that dialogue about Kevin Bacon, so that's important. Okay. Lord of Omens, give me sight beyond sight. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready? Prepare for blast off. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. This is 80s Reboot Overdrive Podcast.
Oh my god. That is like so dated. This is 80s Reboot Overdrive and I am Dave. Online I've got 80s Mixtape Auto Reverse Scott. How you doing Scott? I'm doing great Dave. Thanks for having me on. It's been such a long time since I've talked to you. Yeah I know Actually, dude. No that is not true. We, I, I gotta say, it, it was very exciting to meet you in person for the first time this last week. We've been able to uh, uh, talk quite a few times on a lot of different subjects, and it was good being able to hang out with you and uh, and get to meet you in person. So, yeah, yeah a little face to face action, uh, yep. and then first time doing that. That was uh, not weird at all because you know we already have this dialogue you know around the '80s stuff, so it was just like we picked right up, at, you know, in person. It was really cool. Right. Yeah, it was uh, good Good to do. And I also got to meet another co-host that I work with often on Mixtape, and that would be Tim from Mixtape. I uh, He lives in your area, and we were able to meet up, and I'm going to have to post pictures of... Uh, I got a picture with him, and I got a picture with you, so we'll have to maybe throw some pictures out there on Twitter or Facebook or something. Yeah, most definitely Facebook, but, you know, Tim doesn't count. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, Tim's a great guy, and um, you know, I just if I had that much in-depth knowledge of heavy metal, then I think that we would have more in common. But I, I mean, that's just not my my jam. So, yeah. But um, you know, if you're wanting to talk, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, heavy metal, uh, like board games in general, you know, uh, vinyl, he's your guy. Yeah, I know that he's really into the uh, the board games and the adventure board games um, and the metal. I, you know, the, I didn't know about the other stuff, but we haven't really gotten to talk about that much that that stuff yet. Yeah, you gotta uh, you gotta branch off a little there. Yeah, see, I never did a lot of the board game stuff, like the Dungeons and Dragons, and except I did one. I, I did play this one game called Car Wars. I don't remember that one. You'll have to look it up. I can't explain it. It's it kind of had the same feel where you rolled dice and you battled it out with cars. And I remember the the one the one vehicle that everybody wanted was the uh, the V Max, the motorcycle, because it was so fast, you know. So anyway, check it out. Some Google it sometime. You'll you might find some fun. So was that an '80s game? Uh, yeah. I I would say it had to be the '80s. All right. Was well, you're, you're, I was definitely a teenager when I was playing it. So. Well, you're on the record now, so it's got to be '80s. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're doing today, we're talking a, another '80s icon, and we have plenty of those that have been posted before. This time, we're going to be talking about '80s icon Matthew Broderick. Uh, as we do at the beginning of these conversations, we briefly give out his. Uh, filmography through the 80s. So in 1981, Matthew Broderick was in the TV series Lou Grant. 1983, Max Dugan Returns. 1983, War Games. 1985, Lady Hawk. 1985 again. 1918, again 1985, TV series Fairy Tale Theater. And yet another credit in 1985, a TV movie Master Harold and the Boys. 1986, he did On Valentine's Day, 1986 movie that not many people have heard of, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 1987, <laughs> Project X, 1988, Biloxi Blues, uh, there is a uncredited for She's Having a Baby, so I'm not sure about that, it says Ferris Bueller as the name, uh, 1988, Torch Song Trilogy, 1989, uh, Family Business, and then 1989, Glory. So he's very busy in the 80s. Um, so, you know, my personal favorite has always been War Games. Um, I, I attribute my whole computer career to War Games because I wanted to be like David Lightman. He, he, he just hacked into the Whopper, you know, and, you know, he was able to not really put that much effort in but at school but then be able to change his grade to get to what he wanted that was kind of my dream even though i didn't have that kind of a system 
Um, you know, I had the Apple IIe, but I don't remember. No, it never it was never hooked up to a modem, so it's not like I really had much much of a chance. But if there was a way that I could have either hooked it into the Whopper and played Global Thermonuclear War, or if I would have been able to, you know, go another way with you know movies and build Kelly LeBrock, I think I would have done it. But I just didn't have a way. Uh, so that's actually my favorite uh, of Matthew Broderick uh, being uh, War Games. I'm going to have to concur. Okay. I would have to say War Games is probably my favorite of his also. Um, Ferris Bueller is a very close second just because I think the timing of Ferris Bueller was, you know, it was, it was 86. It was the year I graduated. It was senior year. So, you know, we all wanted and it took place in the Chicago area. So it was. You know, I, I even though I graduated out in California, I always felt Chicago was my home. I mean, you, you know a little bit of that story, but I, I grew up kind of between the two places, and Chicago always felt like my home. So Ferris was very close and dear to my heart. However, I, War Games, I, we could almost do a whole show just on that movie because I've watched that thing over and over and over, and it's on my iPod for when I need something to pass the time or if I'm on an airplane or something, I put war games on, you know, it's always there ready for me to watch. And, um, early career for, for Ali Sheedy too, is, you know, she was very cool in it. And, but I got a David Lightman was, he was an inspiration and I kind of, I think it kind of led me into that, you know, that, um, I guess you want to call it geeky. I don't know. Geek is good nowadays, right? Right, right. Geek, geek is popular. We can get. Yeah. We, we can say geek. You know. It, so, I, I definitely, I, I related to him so well back then, and I loved the, uh, the green screen. Was it green? It was green screen, right? On the computer that he had, or was it white? No, I think it might have been white. But you can't mistake the Would you like? You know, would you like to play a game? That computer voice that everybody knows so well i'd love to have that on my phone as like my ringtone yeah i def- <laughs> definitely love that that y- you hear that you know would you like to play a game and it, it's in my head i hear joshua saying it oh yeah would you like to play a game right <laughs> which sounds nothing like that uh, obviously i you know i don't do imitations yeah, you know, and somebody that had been in like a lot of movies that was actually really he had a small role in this one, but it was still funny. Uh, a guy named Eddie Deason, hmm. uh, and he was uh, the nerd guy that was worked with uh, in the computer lab where David goes in and asks for advice on how to get around the security so he can get in and play the games, and. The uh, the one guy, um, I want to say his name was Jim, um, and he's like, "All right, you remember?" Ask him what? that, Jim. Go ahead and ask him. Ask him how he did that, Jim. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> That's the guy I'm thinking of, right? It's he's Eugene, hilarious. Yeah. It's also Eugene from Greece. Yes. 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 He's uh, uh, he he plays. I mean, he it's like he was cut out of a um, out of a mold to play that geeky part. Uh, but you got to love him. He's, he's played it well and he's, you know, he's, he's done it several times. So, um, he, he does that role very well. (laughs) And and, and honestly, uh, Charlie, who I do Gamma Cast with, he says, if we Mm -hmm. ever do an eighties icon of Eddie Deason, he's in. So, uh, so that might be on the, uh, the horizon sometime. That's somebody that we should try to reach out to. To Eddie? Yeah, that would be kind of fun. Wouldn't it? You know, it really would because he's played these kind of these smaller roles, but they're iconic. I mean, everybody can relate to him. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah, you Might you, be you, you hear his voice and, and you're like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. I wonder what he's doing these days. I haven't seen I haven't heard him. I heard of anything. So it might be interesting to to see what he's up to these days. <laughs> and and here we are on the Eddie Deason uh, icon series. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but no, no uh, yeah, back to ba- Matthew. Um, so, did you have a favorite scene from War Games? <sighs> That's tough to say, isn't it? 
It really is because I, you know, when he, <laughs> the, the, the embarrassing part when she first walked into his room and he's cleaning up the underwear and the clothes and he's like all, you know, he's shy at first, but then he, you know, he opens up to her and, and, uh, I, it just, there's a lot of, there's so many scenes. I mean, does that, can anybody tell me where the concept of asexual reproduction came from? Your wife. <laughs> Your wife. <laughs> <laughs> And the scene that, that was, I, that's that the scene early that, that was early in the movie too i mean it right. happened right away and you're like oh i like this guy <laughs> yeah, and, and and you know the scene right after that is when he gets into the principal's office and he's like talking to the admin there at the principal's office and he goes well you know the teacher sent me to talk about my attitude problem and he goes yeah. well i think he's tired of talking about your attitude problem he goes well me too <laughs> and that's when he gets the uh the password the password which is pencil pencil very see, good yeah, look at that yeah see i haven't even watched I don't, I don't have it like on my phone or anything like that so it's like i don't have it keyed up but i remember that now that's what we're going I, to do we're going for the rest of this one we're just going to do war game trivia to see who can uh get the other one stuck can you remember the previous password Ooh, um, so because it's it's written down with a line drawn through it, and that, I can't recall it for the life of me right now. I oh, so I could say anything, and you wouldn't know. You can say anything you want. It has to do with school, though, because that's that was the pattern that they were using. Eraser. It might have been. I don't know. <laughs> Where's my iPod? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to do a commentary as you watch it. Because that and I don't have a copy, so. Um, all right, so War Games. Obviously, we're both big fans of that. Um, Huge. Yeah. Um, going on to other movies that he's been in in the 80s, Max Dugan Returns. Did Was that a favorite of yours? Yeah, you know, I like that one. Um, it was interesting. You know, it was, it was uh, oh, I can't remember the guy's name. The older gentleman. He's been in a lot of movies. Uh, give me a second here. I got to Oh, you're, you're Googling. Yeah, no, I'm IMDB. Jason Robarbs. Thank you. I beat you. <laughs> he was in, he, he was also in Parenthood. Yes. Uh, uh, he, he's been in quite a few things, but it was just a, oh, wow. I forgot that, uh, Donald Sutherland was in that one. Right, right. He was the boyfriend. Yeah. Of, uh, of the mother. Maybe. The love interest of of Martha Marsha Mason, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. It was a it was a cute movie. It was kind of a family friendly movie. Well, it was Neil Simon, so right. It wasn't quite as uh, you know, it was kind of a. I don't want to really say romantic in the way of love, but romantic in the way of life. You know what I mean? Right, right. Kind of trying to give you know somebody that's kind of burnt bridges with you a second chance, maybe. Right, and that, that, was, that's the kind of message that you got from that one. Right, right. You know, it was it ended up being a feel good movie at the end, even though you know Max was Max had to die because he was dying of some. I some, thought he just went off into the wind, like it, on the limb. Wasn't it? Wasn't I, it like implied that he was like done with life though? I. Dude, it's, it's been, been long. so long. Since <laughs> it's been a long time. I do remember. I do remember watching it and, and liking the movie. And I, in fact, I can remember a couple of specific, uh, not scenes of how they played out, but like scenery. Uh, they were in a place where there was a small canal that separated some of the housing. And I remember them. There was little bridges every so often that you could cross over, or like walking bridges. Right. Uh, little little things like that keep popping up. For me on that one well but, i remember where there was like a professional baseball player that he got to coach uh matthew broderick's character which uh, i think i remember was his grandson yeah um and because you know every time he's playing baseball he's always striking out and so he hires this professional baseball player and of course i i'm not into sports so i can tell you which one but i just remember that he coached him, and the next thing you know, he hits, of course, a home run or grand slam or whatever it was. 
Uh, right. And then I think that was one of the final scenes where the ball, he was there, he saw it happen, and he paid the little boys, whatever it was, like 20 bucks a piece or something for the baseball. To keep it, to be able to, to keep it. To, in order to be, right. Yeah, I remember now. Okay. Yeah, so in, in my mind, that was kind of the final scene, and then he drives off. I think you're right. I think I'm, I was mistaken on that one. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad that I remembered it correctly. You did. <laughs> it's been that a while, good. though. It's definitely been a while. Yeah, it's probably been a good, well, let's see, I graduated 86. This is our 30th, 30th reunion coming up. So, yeah, it had to be about 30 years since I've seen that one. Maybe, maybe, maybe a little less, 28. I don't know. So, you going to wow. your 30th reunion? Um, that's up in the air right now. All right. Well, if you go, you definitely have to brag about the podcast. Oh, dude, I'm don't want that. <laughs> I'm totally going to brag on it because it's all about the eighties, you know? And right. I mean, this is the class, you know, middle of the eighties. Boom. They, in fact, I have, I've, I've been able to get a few old classmates to, to download and, and listen to the show. So I get input from them every once in a while. Nice. Podcast, yeah. podcast pusher. That's what we like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to be uh, pushing the podcast tomorrow on another podcast. I'm doing a little crossover that I just found out about today. Nice. Yeah. It's on that uh, through that podcast discovery center. All right. Cool. So uh, Scott was throwing out some ideas and I jumped on it. And so he's me and him are talking at 10 o'clock tomorrow and it's going to be I'll be. I'll be pushing the 80s Reboot Overdrive and the 80s Mixtape Auto Reverse pretty heavily. Very, very cool. Yeah, so it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So, all right. You all wanna... right no, no, enough about their <laughs> podcast. Let's talk about <laughs> this. All right, so uh, Lady Hawk, did that one do anything for you? You know, I'm surprised it didn't catch my attention because it was set in that kind of a fantasy role, fantasy environment. And I loved, like, I, I didn't get into Dungeons & Dragons, but there was a computer game called Wizardry. And then, of course, you know of Ultima 2. Oh, kind of yeah. fell in that same, that fantasy uh, role-playing theme. And this movie should really have fallen into that uh, attention for me, you know? Like, I loved uh, The Sword and the Sorcerer and uh excalibur and all that stuff but i don't know why this one never caught my attention and especially you know michelle pfeiffer being you know as popular as she was at the time and um also rucker Hauer was pretty pretty popular at the time too so i i don't know why it just never really grabbed my attention so i, I think i saw it maybe once and uh, how do you feel about this one well, I, I mean, Richard Donner, director, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the people that you mentioned, Michelle Pfeiffer, Rucker Hauer, um, you know, to me, this is, uh, you know, a wonderful little sleeper that, you know, I don't think probably got as much attention as it should have. Um, I love the concept. There was the situation where um, Rucker is a wolf during the, uh, during the night. And Michelle Pfeiffer is a eagle during the day. Right. And, of course, they have a love interest. And, you know, they had this um, spell cast on them so that they would never have the opportunity to see each other except for briefly at that time when they're both turning. Um, just Yeah, it's a wonderful concept. I, I loved the way that, you know, they used Matthew Broderick as kind of the thief slash nerdy guy even back then, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it was fun. It, it, was, it was a fun movie, and I'll probably get some heck for liking it. But, you know, I've mentioned, I've, I mentioned liking Xanadu before, so it's not like I'm, you know, <laughs> not, like I'm, not like I'm above, it, you know, bringing up stuff that, you know, should be embarrassing to other people. Yeah, my, you know, I don't be haters, I, people. I, uh, I kind of mouthed off on that one when you brought up Xanadu. Yes. <laughs> like, I swear, if you say Xanadu, I'm out of here. No, well, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't follow through with what I threatened. <laughs> <laughs> but oh uh, yeah, 
see now this is where we got to go and start thinking about the uh oh the topic we were talking about the other day you know bad movies that we are uh guilty pleasure movies yeah guilty pleasure movies <laughs> so anyway all right well back to matthew matthew yeah so what's next ferris bueller yeah you know there's a few in between there and Ferris Bueller, and I don't really recall most of those. Um, yeah, I yeah, I'm looking at IMDb. I don't recall any of them. Yeah, and I mean Ferris Bueller. And what can you say about that one? That was that it ranks right up there with uh, the Breakfast Club and 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 War Games. I know he wasn't in Breakfast Club, but you know that same feel. High school. We were all in high school at the time, and and it was just relatable. Um, and who didn't want to be Ferris? You know, he was just, he was very cool. And, and I, I really wish I was able to go to the recent 30th anniversary of Ferris that they celebrated in Chicago. I have a, a friend of mine that actually did go and he was, he went to the, the mock parade that went on and he got pictures with, uh, uh, Edie, um, oh, the secretary grace, from uh from ferris she's been in a couple other movies you know, she always plays a character role sure sure edie um oh man what is her last name i can't recall it right now anyway uh he you know my my friend got pictures with her and just went around and got a bunch of different pictures of all these different things that they were you know that they tied into the ferris uh movie in fact edie mcclurg thank you back five years ago it was the 25th anniversary and they played really wish I could have gone to this, but I didn't even find out about it until like the day before it happened. Uh, they, they played Ferris Bueller on the big screen at Wrigley field, the whole movie. So you could buy tickets and watch the movie for the 25th anniversary of Ferris Bueller. And I'm like, ah, oh, that would have been awesome. Um, I think, I think it helps a lot that it, it was such a Chicago thing too. And being, you know, having such a love for Chicago, being part of home as much as it was for me as it is for, you know, you and, and a lot of other locals, you know, it's, it's, uh, it holds, I think it holds a little special place, especially, you know, being John Hughes and the Hughes really loved to focus on Chicago. And I think that that's part of the draw to it. And then you got to love Cameron. And um, uh, Mia Sarah's character, you know, she was very, very attractive. At, you know, I haven't seen her in anything recently, but she was very, very cute as Sloane. Sloane, darling. <laughs> Sloane, <laughs> Sloane, darling. Sloane Peterson. Yes. Uh, the, uh, what was it, the fabulous Mia Sarah? Is that, uh, does that qualify in the same bracket? Yeah, I think she could fall into fabulous. She was definitely uh wasn't that Tim's uh nomenclature for um Phoebe Cates? I think it was. And yeah. Phoebe, Cates, Phoebe Cates was definitely fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous Mia Sarah. Yeah. Uh um, and Jennifer Grey, you know, you can't forget her. She was in there. Oh, that's right. Yes. And she had some great role. She had a great role in that. And then a a, a sleeper role by Charlie Sheen, which was hysterical. When you look back at it, yeah, uh, you know, the the criminal <laughs> and the interaction between Jennifer Grey and 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 uh, Charlie Sheen and the police and yep. the uh, police department was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, I'm actually thinking back to past podcasts, and I yeah. seem to remember not a lot of love for Ferris himself um, because the co-hosts that were on i, I want to say it was nick i could be wrong um but you know they felt that he was a bit of a sociopath <laughs> you know what i remember this i remember yeah. hearing about either i don't remember if i was on the podcast but i remember hearing about this i think it was when you guys did the 1986 movies right and uh i didn't come on board until we did 87 i don't think i don't know if i was on 86 but 86 I, I believe that came up in that that episode and i do remember somebody saying that it was a sociopath thing that ferris had going on and it, it, you know if you kind of break it down it really is <laughs> it's kind of creepy but you know he, he's not the nicest guy 
<laughs> no, not really. I mean, he he forces his best friend into some seriously bad decisions. Right. Uh, you know, stealing his father's car. Not just stealing his father's car, but his Ferrari. You know. You get me out of bed and you have me call Principal Rooney? I'm out of <laughs> here, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hit me? <laughs> I didn't hit you. You hit me. <laughs> <laughs> This could go on all night. I mean, yes, there's a lot of great lines in Ferris. I mean, and then I think we talked about this before uh, at the very end, you know, when he does that, you know, the credits roll. Right. He comes back and goes, what are you still doing here? And I got to say, you know, this this is one of those movies that I don't recall ever seeing it done before where the characters from the movie interact with the audience. Right. You know, and it was like that first time that he looks at you and and starts talking to you. And because of the timing, being in high school and being just who he was, it was very relatable. And which kind of weird. It kind of adds to that whole sociopath thing. He's getting in your head. <laughs> yeah, we actually talk, <laughs> we, we talked about that on the ladies uh, 80s episode, 80s movies episode. And I edited that in post bumper on okay. the podcast. That's why. That's where I heard it. I know yeah. you guys. I know somebody had talked about the the last uh, credit the, after the credits rolled, where he stepped back in. Well, we were we were relating it to like the Marvel movies, where you have to wait until after the credits to get those final scenes that kind of give you an indication as to what's going to happen next, you know, in the Avengers or whatever it is. Um, and it was kind of like, you know, did they do that first, or was you know, I mean, are they just copying Ferris? Okay. But, but okay, we're go gonna ahead. Break, we're going to break away from Matt for just a minute. We can't that, do that. Yes, just for a second. Just <laughs> for a second. All right. We're going to go Burt Reynolds. Burt, okay. All right. You're right. Okay, so that was Smoking the Bandit. I remember a scene where he, um, he hides away from the police officers, and then he just looks at the screen and smiles and then drives away. Okay, that... That is a good point too, but that's not where I was going with this. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. I was I was during during the credit rolls on Cannonball Run, they did all the takeouts. Oh yeah, the outtakes, yes. Yeah. Outtakes. Oh, that was hilarious. It was hilarious. It was with you know, when Sammy Davis and Dean Martin throwing those two little those little bits at each other. Was, yeah, that's good stuff. Anyway. <laughs> so now that we've gotten off the credit roll <laughs> we can move on to another movie and well wait, um well i'm trying to think ferris bueller was there anything else that well i mean yeah i brought up the pack the fact that uh other co-hosts had thought he was a sociopath um you know i i liked the movie i I, about... I you know i enjoyed it you know because it was one of those things where you're like god i wish i would have thought to do that you oh know? yeah you know, and but you know, you know, if I would have done that, let's say I would have take a skip day, there's no way I would have done anywhere near what it is that they did. Right. You're talking about you know the trade, uh, Chicago Board of Trade. They got a they got a Cubs game in. They uh, Sears Tower. A, they did the Sears Tower. They did a parade. Right. Where. Ferris was actually in the parade for a couple of songs. So it, it's, it's kind of unrealistic how much they squeezed into that one day, but, and they ended up in a pool at the end of the day, uh, you know, at, I don't know whose house. And you know, it probably it just, wasn't even their house. <laughs> it might not have been, I think it might've been Cameron's house. And yeah, it's just, it, it is crazy how much they actually fit into it fit into that day but i often refer to those okay in the beginning of the movie they they're they show the sky with like just a handful of white puffy clouds and if i see a day like that i often refer to it as a ferris day and i would love to just take the day off and i i've never been able to really take the day off on a true ferris day but that that's how I look at those days that are just absolutely perfect. You know, about about 78 degrees, a little bit of 
just a couple of clouds here and there sprinkled throughout the sky. Beautiful sun, beautiful blue. That's a Ferris day. Yeah, it's like, how can I possibly deal with blank right. on a day like today? Yeah, you know, right. and then everybody fill in the blank. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So anyway, awesome movie. You know that I'm sure that could fit into. We gotta. I know you did some John Hughes stuff on a crossover podcast, but have we ever really touched on John Hughes on the '80s reboot? Oh, you mean just between yeah. just between us friends? <laughs> mostly, yeah, most of the '80s. Mostly. Uh, John Hughes. No, it's always been kind of on a guest thing because I did the. For the record, Dear John Hughes, where it was like the live show um, yeah. musical. I talked to those guys, and we talked mm-hmm. through all the different movies. And then the Captain's Pod was the other one where we talked about right. Teen where they movies. actually like right. yeah, they broke down like the John Hughes characters and and uh, the the psychology behind it and stuff, which was really interesting. I love those podcasts; those were really good, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, but um. You know, yeah, like I'm the one that was responsible for all that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, uh, uh, you know, but as far as like, you know, other than what we've done with the Icon series, you know, where we talked through like the Breakfast Club and things like that, that's really the extent of what we've done with just amongst us. We mm-hmm. haven't really gone in depth with, well, no, I take that back. Didn't we do a director version? Didn't we do John Hughes already? Uh, did we? Oh wow! Okay. I'd have to go back and look at. I, I I know we've done a couple of directors. I, can, I it would be amazing if we skipped John Hughes. Yep. All right. Now I got homework to do. All right. Well, I, <laughs> every one of these shows we always have homework. Oh yes, uh, that's one of the things. Like on the mixtape series that I do with Tim and and Chris. They're always throwing curveballs at me that I got to go back and like research these bands that I've that I barely recall. And they're like, oh, you got to hear this album. It was an awesome album. And I, I end up doing homework. So <laughs> we were talking about actually doing a homework series <laughs> of, th- of things that you said, this is what I'm going to go back and listen to and then talk about it again. Yes. And I actually I have I have notes. I actually went back and listened to some of these albums and I have notes. So, yeah. It's good. It's fun. <laughs> aren't, aren't you a good little podcaster? <laughs> you take notes. <laughs> I, I, I can't help myself. I got to take some kind of notes and, and know where I'm going with my, if, if I don't, my mind will get off track. Like I didn't really prepare too well t- for tonight. Although Matthew Roderick's been kind of in my head as far as like an icon series, I think I would have been thought it was going to be fun. So, well, it's, uh, it's like you've got to tell me these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have told you last week when I ran into it, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> We're like, hanging I, by the. I yeah. have this idea, Dave. That's all you had to do, but no, <laughs> we had to get like completely random first. <laughs> but anyway, hey, random can be fun, right? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. That was, you know, it, that could have been fun too. Who knows what would have happened? Yeah. Uh, so Ferris Bueller, we're done talking about that. Project X. Um, Helen Hunt was in this one. Uh, she's training a monkey to know sign language, and somehow the she loses funding for her project. The monkey ends up at a laboratory where they're trying to train them to fly planes um, or rocket ships or something along those lines. But then the final mission is that they end up um, gassing them, which eventually they die, but they're, they're trying to figure out is how long pilots are going to last after they've been subjected to chemicals. Right. Um, and then obviously once Matthew Broderick realizes that this is what's happening to the monkeys and he's attached to the one that knows how to do sign language. Obviously, I remember way too much about this movie. I don't even know why. Um, and, you know, so he ends up trying to find out where this monkey came from. He gets in touch with Helen Hunt. And then they end up saving him and setting him free. Yeah. You know, I, that's this is the second, like, 
big actress that really came out of a couple of films that that uh, Matthew Broderick did with like with like Ali Sheedy and now Helen Hunt. You know, two actresses that really went on to uh, excel in right. their careers down the road. Um, this movie, it's bittersweet because you know you want to you're rooting for them to try to rescue the the monkeys and. And it's really kind of dark, and it's uh, for animal lovers. It's really hard to watch this movie. It is like you you don't want to see these you know this happening, and you know that there's there's been all kinds of weird experiments going on through the decades of as long as we've been around, you know. Uh, as far as like you know, makeup and then they have this whole air force thing and it was just, it was really hard to watch. And I started, I tried to go back and watch it. It came on Netflix for a while. I don't know if it's still out there, but I started to try to watch it and I lasted about 20 minutes. And I'm like, you know what? It's just, it's just too hard to watch because I love animals so much. You know, I'm, I'm a huge dog person. I just, we have a couple of greyhounds and a, and another little, mixed breed mutt thing that's been around for 13 years and just love the animals, you know, love, love seeing that. In fact, we were going to go see the secret life of pets tonight, but because we just got back from vacation, we were just kind of a little too exhausted. So we're just kind of, just kind of chilling at home, you know? Um, but yeah, this one was, this was a, it was a, it was a good movie. It was well done, but it was, it was kind of sad. So, that that's my take on it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I honestly just from what I remember, I don't even think that I may have seen it more than maybe twice in my life. Yeah, and I'm surprised like, that ever, I remember. Ever. I, I'm surprised I remember the details that I do. That's impressive. I mean, that that all that came back to you, so it made an impression, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just remembered, you know, like there was this older monkey that kind of had. Uh, was kind of rough around the edges or whatever, and nobody, you know, and, and you know, so Matthew Broderick just kind of had a relationship with with obviously the one. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember the monkey's name, but you know, each of them had kind of their own name, and I want to say that the the older, bigger one was like Goliath or something. Yes, I remember Goliath being one of the characters. How about that? Wow, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> but wow. yeah, so I mean. But yeah, I, I, I don't think that, you know, if the rest of my life went on, I don't think I need to see it again. Yeah, only for the uh, reason of it's hard to watch the, um, the suffering part, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. well, here's the, the list of, of apes, or what were they, chimpanzees. Yes. You had Virgil, which was, oh, that was, uh, was that Willie. Was the, Virgil was the one that they knew the sign language. Right. And then there right. was Goofy and Goliath and Bluebeard, which Bluebeard. I believe had, a, yes, okay. had a, a gray streak in his beard or something. And uh, Ginger, Winston, Spike, Raspberry. Oh, <laughs> Raspberry. Raspberry. Yeah, yeah, raspberry yeah. Raspberry yeah. stuck her tongue out and, and gave you the raspberry. So right. yeah, that, I remember that. And uh, yeah, so... I, you know, I'm kind of with you on that. I, I, like I said, I tried watching it and it just started getting a little bit too tough to watch. I'm like, I just can't do it, man. It's, it's too, too deep. Yeah. So, just, just give me an orangutan named Clyde. That's all I need. So. <laughs> right turn, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm oh, so glad you catch my references. Clint Eastwood, a little Clint Eastwood. We could do a, I, I'm sure we could do an icon, icon on that one, man. Yeah. Clint Eastwood would be fun. Yeah. All right. So, so you know, um, Biloxi Blues, I think I've seen it once, but I re don't remember much of it. I, I'm with you on that one. I, you know, I remember it being popular. Like, it was really – a lot of people watched it, and a lot of people liked it. But yeah, there, I just, it just didn't grab my attention for some reason. I'm not sure why. There, there was, like – there's one scene I remember – um, and I could have sworn it was like he was paying a prostitute and she says, come to mommy. And he says, please don't say mommy right now. 
<laughs> so it was just. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I think that's the only thing I remember from that movie, but it was just that 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 just stuck with me all these years. Uh, and the other one that I think is notable for him is Glory. Um, once yeah. again, I don't remember much of that one either. Um, I don't remember much of it either, other than um, there was a scene where a cannonball gets shot across the field. You know, this is all during the, I believe, Civil War, and uh, the the cannonball itself bounces along the ground a couple times and just takes one guy's head completely off. Ah, oh. yeah, it was, <laughs> it was it was like wow, that was pretty radical. <laughs> You know, with the cast that's in this, this is something that should be like a little more front and center in the brain. Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, Carrie Ulls. I mean, it does have pretty good, pretty good cast. Yeah, exactly. You would think that one would have stuck with me a little bit more. Morgan Freeman, the one you want to hear, you know, read your life story, right? Exactly. I want him on my GPS. <laughs> Oh, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, I, I would love that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool? That would. <laughs> I can listen to that guy read the dictionary. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got a great voice. Uh, you know, it was it was good having him narrate. Um, uh, Shawshank. Yeah, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, yeah, this movie was probably kind of under the radar. And it should have gotten a lot more accolades than it did because of the just because of the cast alone. Uh, I remember seeing it once or twice, and my brother absolutely loved this movie. But he's always been kind of a war history buff. And in fact, he teaches history, uh, U.S. history now, so he's kind of he knows a lot of that stuff. Very familiar with it, so it it was relatable to him. But uh, yeah, good movie, and uh, I might. I might try to go back and watch that one again. It I think won, one might, won, that, won, that one might be worth a rewatch. It won three Oscars. Yeah. Wow, really? That's what it says. Hmm. I really missed out on that one. Yeah, I think we'd have to go back to the uh, Oscar podcast of 1989 and find out what Matt and uh, Jesse think about it. Yeah. You know, that might be a good uh, reference to start off with. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, we always plug our old podcasts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I definitely like plugging all the other podcasts, you know? Sure, sure. Anyway. All right. So, uh, final thoughts, Matthew Broderick. What do you okay. think? Okay. I'm, I'm a little bummed that, just a little bit, that we stop at 89. Because in 1990, he did The Freshman with Mar- um, Marlon Brando. And I thought that was a great movie. I just got a kick out of it. So if we can fall into that category, into that decade, just for a little bit, for 1990, Freshman. A very good movie. Have you ever seen it? I have not. Oh, really? Yeah. I and, think... and, and this is not homework assignment because it's 1990. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just so... kidding. No, I, I'm open to watching it. Is it like on Netflix or something? I don't know. I don't know if it is. I haven't seen it in a while, but I I have I did watch it several times. So it's uh it's very interesting. Yeah, I like and, 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 it. it's and funny. I, I always like when I'm on the show with somebody and then I admit to something missing something that's huge and then I get the gasp. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. No, I you know, I won't say it's huge. Okay. It it's it's a uh, it was like one of those pleasant little hidden gems, you know? Uh, I just, I just like the interaction between Matthew Broderick and, and Marlon Brando. And then there's another character that's in there. That's, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty funny too. So, and it, it, the storyline is about exotic animals. So it has an animal theme to it with a twist. So, just I'll, I'll leave it that. I'm not going to say anymore. Don't no, no spoilers. Got it. Yeah. And, and you know, if you're able to touch on the '90s, then I've got to go. Probably the pentacle 
of Mr. Matthew Broderick's career, the cable guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize you were going to go there. What year was that? 96. 96. Okay. You're stretching it a little. It's okay. <laughs> you're, you're, it's your, it's your show. <laughs> it's your show. You make the rules. So if you want to throw on the cable guy, that is a great pick because <laughs> it's a funny movie. Oh man. It's, it's disturbing. It is. is, what it is. It's really disturbing. Uh, it's what they call what a dark comedy, right? Oh yeah. Most definitely it's is very dark comedy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the interaction between him and Jim Carrey is just hysterical. Yeah, Jim Carrey just steals that movie. Yes, he does. Well, as in most movies that he's in. Well, he's very animated, so it's hard not to do for him. So I gave you free cable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was his name? What, what, did he, what did he claim his name was? Oh, um, from My Three Sons. Um... Oh, shoot. Was it Ernie? It might have been Ernie. Yes, it was Ernie. So, yeah, that was a good one. Uh, you know, it, it's... It'd Chip. be fun to be able to take Chip. these... Chip. I want to... Yeah, it was like something... See, I don't know enough. Like, I don't go that far back in my knowledge but my three sons i want to say the the guy's name was ernie and everyone called him chip i could be wrong i could be wrong so final thoughts matthew broderick <laughs> <laughs> sorry matthew broderick um kind of formed i think i think you'll agree with me kind of formed the way we saw technology with with war games and and just was a uh, very relatable character, I think. Yeah. He never, really played, he never really played anything too over the top. Yes, he seemed like more of a, you know, he was like really into computers, but it was inspirational and he was still seemed like a normal guy because he was kind of normal in school. And I don't know, it just, I, all, a lot of the characters that he played are just kind of fun sociopaths. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no i you know i don't know how to wrap it up i don't know how to give out my final thoughts on matthew broderick well uh, you know i, I mean love his, it, i love his career i'm I'm happy with his career i think he's done a great job over the years yeah i think you know if you looked at things like war games um everything outside of ferris bueller he was the common every every man you know, he was kind of, he's relatable because he was like people, like we wanted to be or like people we knew. So he's kind of a very everyman kind of a guy. The exception to that being Ferris Bueller, where everybody loved him and he was just uber popular with everybody. And in that case, he wasn't relatable, but he was still fun because he had, you know, he brought kind of the Matthew Broderick is isms to it mm -hmm. you know which were those other roles where he was relatable and you're kind of like okay i would hang with a guy like matthew broderick uh but hopefully he wouldn't be taking advantage of me like he was with cameron and you know <laughs> yeah right so you know i mean to me that's the final thoughts on matthew broderick it's like you know definitely you know war games lady hawk uh, Max Dugan returns, you know, all of those were, you know, definitely memorable for me because obviously I remembered a lot more of those details, even though I've only had a few viewings of some of those movies. So it stuck with me. And I think a lot of that had to do with what Matthew Broderick brought to the role. So to me, you know, uh, definitely, you know, an A plus for the 80s icon series because, you know, Matthew is Matthew Broderick. You know, the 80s would have been different without him. Yep. Life moves pretty fast. <laughs> if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you, you could miss it. Very good. I love the quote. All right. So how do people find you on social media? Okay. Um, I am on Twitter. And you can find me at 80s Auto Reverse. 
or at Scott's Eye. And you can also find us on Facebook under 80s Mixtape Auto Reverse or through your, your, your site also, Reboot Overdrive. So um, that's, that's where you can find me. Yeah, I feel a little embarrassed giving the social media credentials out for 80s Reboot just because mm-hmm. I haven't done anything with it in – it feels like weeks. Um, so I, I'm directing everybody on this, you know, on this podcast to go to these, you know, things that I haven't touched. So I feel bad about it, but they're out there anyway. So if you want to check them out, we have uh, 80s Reboot Overdrive is on Facebook. So that's facebook.com slash 80s Reboot. On Twitter, we've got at 80s Reboot. Tumblr is 80s Reboot.tumblr.com. Uh, the blog is southgatemediagroup.com slash 80s reboot blog. And if you ever want to shoot us an email, that's 80s reboot at gmail.com. We will read those on the podcast and talk about them at length. So please do that. And the last thing that's very important is giving us a rating review on iTunes. So please do that if you have a few moments to uh, just go out there and say how wonderful we are on our podcast. That would be awesome. So we appreciate everybody reliving the 80s and have a good night. Good night. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. I can't believe we just did almost an hour on Matthew Matthew Broderick. Broderick. Yeah, you know, and... I, was, we were, I, I didn't think we were going to be able to do that. I, I was actually thinking, you know, we'd wrap that up in 30 minutes and then have time for another one. I was kind of thinking that too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that didn't happen. Nope. So Matthew Broderick, bigger influence than we recall. Yeah. Well, we did spend a lot of time on Ferris and War Games. So those are uh, definitely his two highlights. So. So then what are you doing right now? What am I doing right now? Yeah. Uh, Are you going to bed or is it too late? I don't know. What time is it? It's 10 o'clock. Why? You want to squeeze another one in? What do you got in mind? I don't have anything in mind, but I've, I'm thinking we need more can episodes. Well, if you can come up with something on the fly, we could do something. My wife is probably, I still hear the TV on, but she's probably going go to go to bed here soon. Um, you have to go to bed the same time she does? No. <laughs> no, uh, I do need to. I just need to refresh my drink and oh. uh, and go get my my uh, power cord for my for this computer. All right. So, how long is that going to take? <laughs> Two minutes. All right. You do that, and I'll see if I can come up with a concept. Okay. Okay, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Did you come up with an idea? So far, the only thing that I've thought of was Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm. I, I always want to throw in a female into the mix because I always feel that that does get more attention. Mm. So I, that's where I lean towards, you know, is trying to come up with somebody so we're not always, you know, just the guy best. Yeah, you know... Uh... I don't really know. Other than came, I can't think of anything that she was in other than Lady Hawk right now. Let me, okay. Let me. I am. I. Uh, well, we'll have to say that for the outsiders. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> nah. That's yeah. That's an outsiders. <laughs> Yeah, and we can't do um, – what about uh, Jennifer Grey? Because, you know, that's that's going to be all about dirty dancing, and that's just – I don't know if I can – I don't know if I can go into that one. And Patrick Swayze. So you got um, 
Yeah, I was just looking to see if, like, Sarah Jessica Parker and other than, like, Footloose. Yeah, that was before her time, really. Yeah. And square pegs. Square pegs, yeah. <sighs> Let's see, another iconic movie. Um, we did Molly Ringwald. We already did all the ones from those series. Right. Uh, ladies of the 80s. Leia Thompson's already been talked about. On that. <laughs> Phoebe Cates didn't play enough big roles. She never really played the lead. I just... I, I, I feel like that one definitely needs to be talked about, though. Who? Phoebe Cates? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, <clears throat> I can't help but recall the, uh, the from the, from the uh, the Blu-ray disc or something. I think there's an interview about how that specific part of the movie was rewound so many times and so many VHSs that a lot of times that would you'd see the uh, the glitch in the tape from tracking and being off. And you know what part I'm talking about? I'm talking yeah. about moving in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> Which just until now didn't dawn on me. That was kind of a uh, play on words. Sorry, I'm getting uh, texted by the wife here. Give me a second. Uh oh, it's time. No, so no, the... she. I, I'm at the lake house. She's at home. Really? Yeah, I'm. I'm solo tonight. Me and the dog. Nice. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I could stay up all night podcasting if I wanted. Oh boy, I'm yeah, not I... going to. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but I almost think that we can get a 30 minute episode talking about Phoebe. All right, let me let me look at it real quick. Okay, all well, like Fast Times Ridgemont High, of course, right? Okay, Gremlins, 82. Yeah, I, I mean, I can talk about Bright Lights, Big City, Gremlins, Private School, and Fast Times at Restaurant High. I can fill 30 minutes with that. Hmm. No? I don't think I can, man. I got <laughs> I got Fast Times at Restaurant High, and I remember Gremlins, but I don't remember specifically her. I remember the Gremlins. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember she. Was, I remember she was in it. I also remember uh, Paradise. See, I didn't. I don't remember that one at all. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's just say it was the precursor to uh, moving in stereo, and it was with, <laughs> <laughs> and it was with um, uh, Willie Ames. Oh, yes. So Mr. Zapped. Yeah. Oh, dude. No. It, no, that was his buddy. Scott Baio. Scott Baio was But that. Willie Ames was in it. Yes, Willie Ames was in it. That was a great movie. <laughs> I love it. That's like one of those, that's a guilty pleasure right there. <laughs> All right. So what, do, what about Scott Baio? What do we have on Mr. Scott Baio? Even though not a female. No. Well, there's got to be a girl. <gasps> Yeah, we spent a lot of time talking about happy days. Yeah, and Charles in charge, which was was that late eighties? Yeah, eighty four, nineteen ninety. I'm really trying to come up with leading ladies of the eighties, man. That was. I think we covered most of the ones that were part of that real true genre of the eighties. You know, Molly Ringwald, Leah Thompson. Uh, Ali Sheedy. All right, let me see what I have on this one. Hold on. Let's How about see. Pia Zadora? <laughs> yeah, I don't have much for that one. <laughs> Except for that. Uh, in rock Aliens. Adventures of the Rock Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is tough. I'm going to come up with something. 
actresses of the 80s. Elizabeth Shue. Uh, well, that's interesting. What, Elizabeth Shue? Yeah. Julia Roberts. Go from Karate Kid to Adventures in Babysitting, Cocktail. Well, that's about it, though. Huge crush on Elizabeth Shue. Back to the Future Part 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even though she was knocked out for half the movie. Yeah. God, I'm, I looked it up and I see all these faces and I cannot put names to them. Uh, who's in... When Harry Met Sally, what was her name? Meg Ryan. Yeah, Meg Ryan. One of my favorites. Yeah, Heather Locklear, Heather Thomas. The Heathers. Yes. Uh, uh, Demi Moore. Top Gun, When Harry Met Sally, Inner Space. Mm. That's about all I got for 80s for Meg. Yeah. yeah. yeah if you were to branch into, like, you know, I don't know, 90, or, yeah, 90s, 2000, then I would definitely have more to talk about. Demi Moore is St. Elmo's Fire about last night, One Crazy Summer. We already talked about Demi Moore, didn't we? No. No, no, we didn't. Seventh Sign, Moonlighting, an episode. I don't know about that. Uh, oh, Wisdom. That's the one I always liked that was very underrated. Yeah, see, I don't remember watching much of that one. Yeah, that was the one with Emilio. Emilio! <laughs> this should not be as hard as it is, man. I know. It seems like it's. We 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 almost just need to go to another guy, at this point. Uh, pretty much. So we need to find one that wasn't in the Outsiders, or wasn't in Red Dawn. Actually, the whole cast of Red Dawn was practically in the Outsiders. So right. Except for the girls, which you had Leah Thompson and Jennifer Grey. True. All right, so who's next? All right, hold on. Clint Eastwood? Mm. Uh, do we need, do we need uh, somebody else on the show with Clint Eastwood? Maybe. I love Clint. Oh. <gasps> Who do you got? Uh, Andrew McCarthy. Uh, was in St. Elmo's Fire. Was in Mannequin. Was in 16, or Pretty in Pink. You can now forget about Class. Class. Was that Less than Zero. Also? Oh, yep. Less than Zero, yeah. Less than Zero, Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire, uh, Mannequin, Fresh Horses, hmm. uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Ooh, that's 80s? 89. Wow. That on, fell in the... On, on the edge. All right. You know what? He's he's kind of like one of the Brat Pack kids that kind of got left behind, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, none of the... Well, actually, hold on a minute. Mannequin. What else was uh, Kim Cattrall in? Uh, Porky's. She was in... Yeah, that's right. Was yeah, that Porky's 2 or Porky's? Porky's the original. She was the howler. She was yes. the gym. Yeah, that, that's not family appropriate, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> True. Hey, so check it out. I don't know if... Oh, wait a minute. Police that. Academy, Turk 182. She's got some cred there. Mm -hmm. Big Trouble, Little China. Okay. All right. Something to, to think on. Mannequin, obviously. I don't know if I could do this on a whim. I'd have to look at it. Kim Cattrall? Or yeah, you want to just Cattrall. go... All right. Well, then we'll just go with Andrew. Yeah. So, dude... If you look at right now, if you look at IMDb and you click on class. I'm getting there. Okay. Yep, class. Okay. What do you see as the trailer? 
Oh, uh, that is um, that is definitely not class. Nope. No. That would be Bill and Bill Ted. And Ted. Yeah. Socrates. <laughs> Socrates. <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting little faux pas that IMDb goes on. I'm gonna. I'm going to run it, see what happens here. Dude, if you were, if you're us, what number are we thinking of right now? (laughs) Can you hear that? No. Okay. Uh, What number are we thinking of? If you're us right right now, what are we thinking thinking of? 69! 69. (laughs) Yeah. Bill S. Preston, Esquire, and Ted Theodore Logan. Theodore Logan. We're Wild Stallions. Wow, you know that well. Yeah. Okay, so the preview. All right, refreshing. Okay, this preview, this preview is not, oh, yeah. This preview is not a preview for the movie. Okay. It's a preview for, like, the whole Brat Pack genre there's own the eighties on DVD. So it is it had some great clips in there too though. Okay. I'm gonna have to watch that again some other time. All right, so we're doing Andrew McCarthy. Yep. Let me stop restart. That way there's a better edit point. <laughs> 